called from the United States of America. Stand by, Americans. Here's mail call. One big package of words and music and laughter delivered to you by the stars from whom you want to hear. In answer to the request you send to Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. At the very top of the listening pleasures of you men and women in all parts of the world is the voice of your mistress of ceremonies on this edition of Mail Call. A wonderful gal, your favorite girlfriend, Miss Ginny Sims. And thank you, Bombardiers. Aware as we are of your overwhelming curiosity about the post war world, we've gone to every effort to bring you the foremost authority on the world of the future. Here he is now to tell us what we may expect in the years to come Robert Benchley. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've entitled my remarks uh, A Conscientious Inspection of Fragmentary Glimpses into the Esoteric and Pragmatic Aspects of Universal Predilections or, or Peekaboo 1950. <laughs> I confess that I've approached this microphone tonight with considerable trepidation and a slight limp which I received while moving to the rear of a sunset bus. <laughs> That was the driver's idea. He kept shouting, back, back, and before I knew it, 30 people were trying to break mine. <laughs> there really wasn't any more room back there, are there? See, what they should have is another driver in the back who could shout, front, more room up front. <laughs> this would assure a happier distribution of passengers. 
except, of course, for the people in the middle <laughs> who could either ride to the end of the bus line or wait to be squirted through the top. <laughs> But I'm afraid I'm digressing here from the subject of my little lecture, whatever it is. Oh, yes, <clears throat> the world of the future. Everyone is asking, what will be the new homes like? What will the new automobiles be like? What will te television be like? These questions are on every tongue. Well, I believe I can state without fear of contradiction that uh, tongues will be pretty much the same. <laughs> Uh, nevertheless, uh, these are serious problems Which I should like to deal with individually Or one at a time, as the case may be <laughs> No doubt there are those among you Who are saying to yourselves uh, What the heck is he setting himself up as an authority for? To them, I have only one answer And that, unfortunately, has been censored <laughs> However, I think that you should know that in recent weeks I've been huddling with Professors Blini, Stegenbeck, and Skimmerkrotz, <laughs> as well as the people in the back of the Sunset Bus, <laughs> and they feel, that is, the professors feel, the people in... <laughs> <laughs> the people in the Sunset Bus are numb. But these professors, after exhaustive research, feel definitely that the home of the future will undoubtedly be, and here I quote, some place. <laughs> Unquote. I suppose a lot of you have heard that these homes will be constructed entirely of glass. I'm happy to tell you now that this will be, quote, the, unquote, case. <laughs> here are your new paragraph. <clears throat> Uh, from cellar to roof, the abode of the future will be 100% transparent, with the exception of Venetian blinds for certain rooms. <laughs> <laughs> After all, we wouldn't want anyone to peek at us while we're reading, would we? <laughs> the uh, advantages of living in glass homes is self-evident. How friendly we would be with our neighbors, you know? <laughs> just, uh, just picture it. You're on your way to work in the morning. You meet a neighbor on the trolley. Conversation might go something like this. You say, hello, Tom. I see your wife is back from the country. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom says, yes, it's nice to have her back. And you say, I'll say it is. <laughs> Then Tom might remark, uh, the little woman sure put on weight in that place, to which you might reply, uh, I know what place you meet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so much for the world of sports. We now, uh, we now come to the automobile of the future. Just last night, I was huddling with Professors Blini, Stegenbeck, Skimmerkrats, and a short blonde. <laughs> it was getting pretty dull up there, just the four of us. And I learned many interesting facts. That is, from the professors, not the blonde. <laughs> well, oh, she taught me a lesson, too, but that's contained in another lecture, which I do mostly at army camps. <laughs> But to get back to the future, the automobiles you will drive in 10 years from now will require no gasoline whatever. They'll operate solely on alcohol. It's been conservatively estimated that six martinis could take you to San Francisco. <laughs> of course, after six martinis, I often find myself in Frisco without a car. <laughs> Uh, another great boon for future drivers will be the lack of noise connected with your traveling. They've developed a wonderful new silencer that will effectively eliminate all noises in the car. It fits right over her mouth. You just... <laughs> All of which brings us to the subject of television. <laughs> Only this afternoon, I was huddling with Professors Blini, Stegenbeck, Skimmerkrats, and four blondes. 
who, by the way, are waiting for me at this very moment in our experimental laboratory at the Eager Arms Apartments. <laughs> so if you'll just excuse me, I'll stop prying into the future and go out and get myself a past. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, now it becomes my very pleasant duty to introduce an artist who has long been one of America's favorite violin virtuosos. I know you'll enjoy his music tonight as you have so often in the past. Here, then, is Rubinoff and his violin. Tonight, Rubinoff has chosen to play the melody from the picture of the same name, Intermezzo.
very beautiful. Thank you. I'm sure that you all share my opinion that your next mail call correspondent is just about the greatest of all Latin America. Good neighbor. Thank you, Ginny, for that wonderful introduction. Well, Tito, you're certainly welcome. I see you brought your guitar with you. Yes, and that is nice, and uh, that is a nice guitar you have, too. Well, I haven't any guitar. Oh, pardon me. I was looking at your figure. (laughs) (laughs) Please, Tito. (laughs) Say, you came here to play. Uh, Well... Get that look out of your eye and that guitar in your hands. And tell us what you're going to sing for us tonight. I would like to sing, uh, Let Me Love You Tonight. Ah, these Latin Americans. (laughs) No comprendo, me dices, como es que sientes ese amor tan vehemente solo por mí no concibes que pueda quererte con todas las fuerzas de un alma porque te No es que quiera decir que tú has sido el único amor para mí, ni que el beso que aún siento ardiente ha sido el primero. Solo sé que en la vida es preciso saber esperar y callar para luego alcanzar lo que siempre anheló el corazón no te importe saber que mi boca besará otra boca una vez Pues no hay huellas ni existen recuerdos que no borres tú. Tu cariño ha traído un algo, un no sé qué. Que no deja que mis ojos miren más que hacia ti. every week, millions of people turn millions of dials to a certain station so they won't miss the next episode in the life of a certain genial fellow. He's one of America's best love comedy personalities, the great Gildersleeve. (laughs) 
And now let's join Gildersleeve and his little family in Summerfield. At the moment, Gildersleeve is trying to read his evening paper, but his nephew, Leroy, well... Hey, Unc! You heard the lady. I'm trying to read my paper, Leroy. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to ask a question. Wait till I finish this article. It'll only take a second. Well, what is it, Leroy? Did you ever have a girl kiss you? (laughs) Did you? Well, Leroy, I can't tell a lie. Why do you ask? Oh, nothing. Did you ever go to a Halloween party? Oh, yes, lots of them. Did you ever go to one where they turned out all the lights? Well, not that I recall. (laughs) 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 Not exactly, anyway. Uh, Is that what happened at your uh, party last night? Yeah. Well? I wound up under the stairs with Ethel Hammerschlag. (laughs) (laughs) Little Leroy. Well, I guess he's growing up. <laughs> well, that reminds me, Unc. There's a question I've been wanting to ask you. Uh, he. <laughs> yeah, I knew the day would come. Uh, there's something I've been meaning to take up with you, my boy. Sit down. Sit down? What for? Well, this may take some little time. Okay, shoot. Uh... Are you comfortable? Sure. I just wanted to ask this one question. If you'd just be quiet, my boy, I'll answer all your questions. Uh, This is a mighty big subject. Gosh, you don't have to make a whole big thing out of it. It's the biggest thing in the world, my boy. Uh, Let's see. Uh, How did you do in school today? (laughs) All right, what's that got to do with it? Nothing. (laughs) Uh, Let me see. Uh, Leroy, you know the story of Noah's Ark? Sure. Well, how did the animals go into the ark? Up a little runway. They went in two by two. (laughs) Now, why do you suppose Noah was so careful to have two of each? Because that's all there was room for. (laughs) Leroy, I wonder where you go from here. (laughs) You don't see many Noah's arks around anymore, do you, Unc? Why is that? The army's getting them, Leroy. Let's try and stick to the subject. Well, I wanted to ask you... Just let me explain this in my own way, my boy. Okay, go ahead. There's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. Wish I knew the right way to do this. (laughs) Now, where were we? Noah's Ark. Forget Noah's Ark. Uh, You've heard of the flowers, haven't you? Sure. You've also heard of the bees, have you not? Yep. Yeah. Now... What are the bees doing when they're flying around in the garden? Making honey. Uh, Very good, my (laughs) boy. Very good. But that's not all the bees are doing. Uh, Do you know what else they're doing? Stinging people. (laughs) That's not what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean. When the bees go into the flowers to get honey, they accidentally get pollen on their legs, and then when they go to the next flower, some of it comes off, and that's what keeps the flowers going. Well, is that a fact? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, where'd you learn that? Gosh, I learned that in the 6B. Yeah, well, that's all very interesting. Now let's get back to fundamentals. Okay. <laughs> but if you'd only just listen a minute, all I want to Leroy, know is... I wish you'd learn not to interrupt. Well, there you go again. This is a very difficult question. I need your cooperation. Uh, <clears throat> has it ever occurred to you, my boy, to wonder where you come from? Peoria, Illinois. <laughs> I'm not speaking geographically, Leroy. I'm speaking uh, t- uh, indirectly. <laughs> now, let's try again, will you? Uh, I wonder if you've ever heard a little poem. Used to be very popular when I was a boy. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's a very beautiful poem with a very lovely thought. What is it? Uh, where did you come from, baby dear? Out of the nowhere, into the here. Are you kidding? Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I know a poem, Monk. Oh? I woke up in the morning, I looked upon the wall, there was a flea in a bed bug having a game of ball. Let's go, another <laughs> Gods, will you shut up and let me tell you what I'm trying to tell you? Sorry, Uncle. Go ahead. What I want you to understand is, I mean what I'm trying... Children should be seen and not heard. Go to bed, Leroy. But, Uncle, can I ask you this one I'd question? I'd rather that you wouldn't. Can I have a buck to go to the movies? No. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, I guess so, Leroy, if you won't ask any more questions. Gee, thanks. Uh, wait a minute. 
Since when have movies cost a buck? Well, I'm taking somebody. Taking somebody? Who? Ethel Hammerschlag. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the Bijou. Well, go ahead, my boy. Here. Here's 80 cents. But, Uncle, with 80 cents, Ethel and I will have to sit in the balcony. Exactly, Leroy. One night in the Bijou balcony, and you can explain a few things to me. <laughs> Well, my spies tell me that the mail you guys and gals have been addressing to the Armed Forces Radio Service is loaded down with requests for a particular tune. The title might indicate a certain desire, and then, on the other hand, I guess it might. Anyway, I'd like to sing it for you now. Let's cuddle up a little closer. Love be mine Cuddle up and be my little Clinging vine Like to feel your cheek so rosy Like to make you Cozy, cause I love from head to toesy. Love be mine. Cuddle up a little close, baby. Love be mine. That's it, fellas, the end of another mail call letter. Signatures include Jenny Sims, Dito Gizar, Robert Benchley, Rubinoff, Hal the Great Gildersleeve Perry, Walter Leroy Tetley. The Armed Forces Radio Service Orchestra and yours truly, Don Wilson. This program is arranged with the cooperation of the Hollywood Victory Committee. Another mail call will be coming your way the next time you hear... This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.